The LA Clippers were back home or home for one more year. Their final year at the Staples Center or the Crypto.com Arena beginning with the third preseason game. This one against the Denver Nuggets who did not play their stars. But in this episode, going to be talking about the Clipper win, the big news that was reported before the game in regards to the starting lineup, why we shouldn't overreact to preseason, and the best things I saw from the game on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir, you are locking in with Eclipse. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Viziri, born and raised in L.A. And in the end of my 19th season as a Clipper fan, the end of the preseason, I should say, of my 19th season as a Clipper fan, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper, NBA, and LA sports content and Locked On Clippers, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where I want you to let me know what were your favorite things that you saw in the game or just give me any observation that you made in the game on Tuesday night, which I was in attendance at, and it was so good to be back home. And even though it's only our home for one more year, it feels like home for me because as I've mentioned many times on this show, it's the stadium where I first went to games. You know, I'm twenty, only 25 years old. So, and if you're wondering if I'm the youngest Locked On host, yes, I am. I think I'm a little younger than Koo from Locked On Pistons, but yes, I am the youngest one. 25 years old, Staples Center is all I know when it comes to Clipper games, when it comes to NBA games in my city. And it has a special place in my heart. And I'll tell you what, just being back and seeing all the Clipper fans, seeing familiar faces, people that watch Locked on Clippers, I mean, it was just just awesome to see friends and really feels like family. Clipper Nation is a very tight-knit group, great fan base that uh, is a very generous fan base as well. And it was good to be in the stadium. I was in my supporter section, that new supporter section. And, man, the people that are uh, organizing it are going, like, balls to the wall in terms of, like, the chants they want and props they want to use. Like, geez. But what I love is that I got the sense that all these people really love the Clippers and want to be loud. And when you get a full section of that during the season, let's see if it makes a difference if you can hear us on TV. We'll see. But as far as the game, right, Clippers winning at 116-103 to against the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets did not play any of their five starters. You saw the great Clipper legends, Reggie Jackson and DeAndre Jordan, in the starting lineup tonight, or on Tuesday night, and they got a solid hand from the late-arriving Clipper crowd. I shouldn't even say late-arriving. It was normal for the ratio of fans that were there. 85% attendance for a preseason game. I think that's pretty good. No doubt that the attendance this year will be better than last season with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George being healthy to start the season for the first time as Clippers. So, again, knock on wood, I'm, I'm continuing to knock. Another game, three straight games now, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, no injuries. And that's what we should be really happy about. One more game is all it takes before we get to opening night, and that would be the first opening night that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George would be starting together in front of Clipper fans. But let's talk about the game. And actually, before I talk about the game, the big news that came out before the game, and that was Ty Lue saying and revealing the... Three players that are in contention for that starting spot next to Kawhi, Paul, Zhu, and Russ. Terrence Mann, Robert Covington, Nicholas Batum. You know who wasn't mentioned there? Marcus Morris. And I want to say this again, because I've said it so many times. But I want to reiterate it. 
I still like Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris is a member of Clipper Nation that was big time in 2021 and 2022. But in 2023, his knees just went and he wasn't the same player. We've all known that last season, Ty Lu played him to the point where everyone could see he wasn't as good as other players that were on the team that were not only getting less minutes than him, but not playing at all like Robert Covington. And he just persisted with Morris until it became to the point where it was like, dude, if you he's getting cyber bullied at this point. Finally, he did. But the big question was, because the Clippers tried to trade him, right? This past offseason, they tried to trade him in that Malcolm Brogdon deal that fell through. And people are saying Marcus Morris is still going to be on the team. He's still going to get rotation minutes and all that because Ty Lue loves him so much. And their personal relationship is going to supersede everything here. And I've been actually saying that Marcus Morris, there's a chance that this season he's just out of favor. He made a big deal about getting taken out of the starting lineup last season. That was well documented. We saw the reports after the season come out that he wasn't happy with his role. So, and Robert Covington was a true professional through everything last season. So now it may be time to have a little switcheroo. Robert Covington is the guy that is getting those minutes, maybe as a starter, maybe he's off the bench, who knows. He looked pretty good as a starter in the game that he did start against the Jazz, the second one. But now Marcus Morris has to be that third string guy waiting for a chance when players are injured or load managing. That's the fairest thing. If you have a problem with it, I mean, the Clippers could trade him or waive him. I don't know. It seems like right now he's around, but he hasn't played in any of the preseason games, which is fairly telling in my opinion, especially because I keep seeing videos of him shooting in practice. Now, granted, it's not the same as playing full speed preseason game. But there's just more to it than meets the eye than Morris. To get injured before we even played a game, it was, I don't know what's going on there. But all I know is I care about what's best for the Clippers. And any of those three guys starting, I'm not mad at all. I've already said I want Terrence to start. But after seeing the way Rocco played, I'm not totally opposed. As long as it's not senior and it looks like it's not going to be, and I automatically think that's going to give us a better start to the season and more of a chance to be a serious team. And when Ty Lue's talking about being more serious this regular season, I think he's largely speaking about himself as well. And coming up, going to be talking more about the actual game that took place, Clippers and Nuggets, 116-103 Clippers. Going to be talking about why people shouldn't overreact to preseason. Coming up. I got to tell you a little something about Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are the best legwear out there now. Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. And that's because they're made of a, not made of a stiff restricting cotton like regular shorts, Bird Dogs fixed that issue by inventing cloud-knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. So you can do athletic activities, you can just walk around your house, all that with Bird Dogs. And Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Bird Dogs can be used for any occasion, anywhere, indoor, outdoor, don't matter. Just go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA or enter promo code locked on NBA at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Woof 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 Thanks for making Locked On Clippers your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. I'm actually contemplating between two different episode ideas. One, responding to the GM survey. And two, I was thinking about just re-watching the game, the actual telecast of it. Because I always get a different perspective when I watch it on TV versus watching it 
at the game. So I would like to maybe rewatch it, see if I no- see anything differently. But let's get into it, right? Because I haven't really said much about the game. Yikes. The Clippers, it was a slower start. They were just missing a lot of open shots, and Reggie Jackson came out like vintage Reggie, getting around screens and making floaters and runners. But the Clippers, I thought they were doing fine executing offensively. Just Kawhi was, had a donut for a long time, and Paul George was dribbling a lot. But Westbrook was doing a really solid job of getting two feet in the paint, either trying to post up other guards or just pushing the pace. And every single time, the big, I think it was DJ, that would help. He would find Zoo right in the middle of the key, right in the dunker spot for little floaters and push shots. And Zoo even had a nice and one jump hook as well. So this was the best we saw of Ivica Zubats in the preseason so far. 13 points and eight boards. In just 23 minutes of play. And because no Plumlee tonight. They didn't give a reason why, I don't think. But I think it's just, you know, resting him. Zoo played basically the entire first half. 23 minutes. And he had 13 and 8 with 3 blocks. I thought he did an amazing job protecting the rim as well. And I think this whole preseason, at least in all the Clipper games, I haven't watched any other team play. They've been really letting the guys play. And calling nothing. I think that's going to change. In the regular season, and it kind of should because some of these no calls are a little bit ridiculous. But first quarter, it was 25 25, and I'm on Twitter just looking at the game, what people are saying, and people are overreacting like crazy. Is this not, I mean, is this your first rodeo? I should say, because it's not mine. I always say 19 seasons as a Clipper fan to just give you a little, that's not a lot, right? Compared to a lot of people that are probably listening to this show, probably been watching ball. For much longer than 19 years. But 19 years straight. Start, each year I'm starting to feel older saying that type of stuff. Next year's going to be 20 years. Wow. Can't believe I, I've been, I'm going to be able to say I'm watching something for 20 years. But point is, I've been watching basketball very closely in that time. And in that, I know by now, it shouldn't take 19 years, by the way, to know that preseason – You cannot take it so seriously. This is the time where coaches are trying to literally try out sets, seeing what works with different combinations. Guys are rusty as hell. You can't take the results seriously. And even then, I mean that even when talking about the Clippers winning by 13. It was a tie game after one, and then the Clippers were up by nine at halftime, 60 to 51. And it was the Paul George and Russell Westbrook and if it's a Zubat show, really. But I just want to emphasize that it's not that big a deal, certain performances in preseason. Again, Norman Powell off to a rough start, not just to the preseason. Hopefully, he doesn't carry into the regular season like it did last season. But he's playing, he's struggling to start the season, basically. And that's actually, I shouldn't even say that. We haven't even played a game. People are just overreacting so much. Norman Powell does not is not playing well in preseason right now. Okay, I have confidence that he's going to return to his normal self as the season goes. Okay, he's making some bad decisions. He's not a great passer. He's just getting into the swing of things. And he started to make some more shots in the second half. Let's see how many he ended with. Yeah, he made two shots in the second half. He had five points and two assists, one turnover. On 2 for 7 from the field and 0 for 3 from deep. Look, teams know that Norman Powell is really good going right and isn't great going left. So they're all going to ice the screens, which means that the guy guarding him is going to basically be forcing him to the left baseline at all times. Even if someone comes to set a screen on Norman Powell's right, they're still going to try to, you know, open up their body and show him that left side early. So they, they force him to go that way, essentially. And teams know that he has a favor. Teams know that he favors his right and he's really good going that way. Let's see how that is combated by him. It's not like he's never seen that coverage before, by the way. So I think he's going to be fine. Bones Highland also had a rough start. Very rough start. But... He got a lot better as the game progressed as well. 
Handel is so fast, so fast. The one thing is he was over dribbling, in my opinion, a lot when he was isolating. And that's something he does. Paul George was also doing it too at times before he started simplifying things and just started going crazy after. But don't need all the extra dribbling. Bones Highland dancing a little too much, but I still like what he was creating as the game went on. Transition, buckets, blowing by defenders, and then feeding it off to the open man. You saw a couple of dump-offs around the rim and also just finishing around the basket as well. His three-point shot has not been good so far in this preseason. I think a couple of them tonight were or Tuesday night were forced. Just shots that he was like thinking, I need to make a three because I'm not shooting well from three and shot them quick. And they weren't easy shots. Granted, he's a tough shot maker, but they weren't easy shots. And he was one for four from three. I don't even remember seeing his three. Must have been not paying attention at that time. You know, my attention in the game wasn't at an all-time high given that it was preseason. But obviously when the season starts, I'll be locked in for every single possession. But Bones Highland, as far as from two, he was three for five. So again, very efficient inside the arc. Just the three ball has not fallen for him so far in this preseason. Four for nine for Bones, one for four from three, three for four from the line. And overall, 12 points, three rebounds, four assists, and two steals. Three turnovers, a couple of bad reads in the pick and roll. But again, this is what he needs to get better at. We need to give him more reps to develop into that backup point guard that we want him to be for our title quest. And... It's funny because I actually saw Bones struggling a bit on defense in this game, but I'm seeing the conversation on Twitter, everyone's saying that Bones did a good job guarding, and that's why I want to emphasize again, my attention wasn't as locked in as normal. I see the three steals, but I do remember a couple of times he got scored on. However, that's why I kind of want to watch the game again and talk about it potentially on the on the Thursday episode. But I liked what I saw from Bones offensively just because I love the juice he brings. He really adds some pace. And we've been saying we want to play faster. Bones is going to help us play faster. And I like how much we're empowering him right now. I think his confidence is going to be really high. And as I've said, he'll have his bad games. But he's also going to have games where he really gets the crowd going crazy. But Kawhi Leonard, it took him a little while. He wasn't hitting shots. But very good looks, by the way. Very good looks. Guarding Reggie Jackson and working hard on defense. Again, decent game defensively for the Clippers. The thing is, Denver is tough to guard. Like, they, no matter who's playing, of course, it's totally different with Jokic. But no matter who's playing, they still run this motion offense. They still have a bunch of movement. So, when the Clippers, they're switching basically everything besides the centers, right? They're switching one through four, and they're switching those off-ball as well. And when you switch those off-ball screens, you need to be sharp because if you're not... There is that second where you, uh, the offensive player is slipping to the basket and you're communicating, you're figuring out, should I, should I have switched, should I have not? With NBA players, all it takes is that half a second and boom. You miscommunication, guy goes back door on, on a back screen, boom, dunk. So I saw a couple of those breakdowns happening for the Clippers, but that's why you need to not overreact during preseason. That may happen in the regular season. You're going to have defensive breakdowns, obviously. But happening more than usual, you know, Clippers struggling a little bit in the first quarter against the Nuggets G League team or their bench warmers. This is where you make those mistakes. It's where you work out those kinks so it doesn't happen on opening night against Portland. I don't even, right now, I don't even know our second game. I haven't even thought about it because I am really just going one game at a time this year again, like the old school days. Last season, I looked at the first 10 games to start the season, and I was like, we need to go 7-3 and three or 8-2. and two. We got Portland on Wednesday. That's all I care about, and that's all we need. But Kawhi eventually started getting the shot going. Westbrook created a couple of open shots for him. At least one of them in the corner for three where Russ really pushed the pace, changed pace, went from zero to 100 real quick, swung it in the corner to Kawhi with a little pump fake, and hit one. Seven points for him, two rebounds, two dimes, and a steal on two for five shooting and two for four from three in 17 minutes. Of course, he only played the first half. Really quiet game for Kawhi, but I'm just happy he got through it with no injury. Nicholas Batum got... Three rebounds in like the first four minutes of the game. Thought he was solid. Hit two threes out of three attempts. Six points, four boards. Typical Nico in 16 minutes. Didn't see him in the second half. 
But I was really happy with the performances of Ivica Zubats, Russell Westbrook, and Paul George. And coming up, going to be talking more about them along with the others like Terrence Mann, a little Xavier Moon action. Going to be talking about those guys coming up. I got to tell you a little something about FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. Wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, so visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right. So let's go in more depth about the performances of PG, Zoo, and Russ. Paul George. In the beginning of the game, I was like, this guy's dribbling too much. He's got Reggie Jackson on him and he's dancing. Just make your move, dude. And eventually, as the half went on, he started catching the ball more in the mid post, more in the elbow, a little closer to the basket, but also just putting on a show. Everything was swishing. He had the hot hand. He was getting into his bag. And you got to love it when Paul's playing like that. And he wasn't just shooting jumpers, trying to go to the basket, got two and ones. Love to see that from PG. When he's playing aggressively and hitting his shots, he is one of the smoothest basketball players to watch that I've ever seen. And have him on our team, it is surreal in those moments. And tonight, just a little stretch, you got a little taste of what PG is capable of. It was awesome. 23 points, 5 rebounds, 9 for 13 shooting in 18 minutes. Love to see it from Paul George. It's, it's all in his head. You know, it's all about his aggression. You want to, You know he can do that against great competition as well. It's not like... He can only do that against the Nuggets bench warmers. No, he can do that against anyone. He's proven it time and time again, but he's also proven to be inconsistent time and time again. So Paul George, loved what I saw, both ends of the floor, active, aggressive. Just need to see consistency. Russell Westbrook, I thought he was fantastic, pushing the pace, finding the open man whether it was Kawhi Leonard on the perimeter, if it's his Zubats when he was drawing two, posting up, or getting to the basket. Russ is going to make teams pay majorly this season when they leave him open because what he's going to do is he's going to crash the offensive glass. And he is really, as everyone knows, one of the best rebounding point guards of all time, if not the greatest. And he can still get up there. He has great timing. He's going to give us second chance opportunities. And that's how you make up for not being the best outside shooter. Russ in this game, seven points, five rebounds, seven assists, only one turnover, three for four from the field, and one for two from deep. Didn't get to the line. One thing I do want to say, by the way, those are very good numbers, and they're only in one half. So he's on triple-double watch at this point. Now, as far as one of the flaws for the Clippers in this game, I thought the turnovers, too much, 16 of them. We're not playing against a very good team, obviously. And I know it's preseason. you got to work out the kinks. But 16 turnovers is still, eh. You like to see them keep that number down. Terrence Mann. Took a little bit of a while for him to get into it offensively. But as the second half went on, he got more reps, more chances on the ball. You started to see a little bit of that fading mid-range going to his right that he's clearly put some work into and he's trying to show what he can do in games. Had a really nice snatch back for a little fadeaway in that second half from the right elbow. Terrence Mann, eight points, seven rebounds, two assists on four for six shooting. And we've again heard another report. This one from Jake Fisher, who's been on top of the Harden thing. He said that Terrence Mann is basically untouchable right now. And we've heard that a lot the last couple of days. And I love hearing it. People think we're unserious. People think, oh, how could you not trade Mann for Harden? Look. I don't need to explain myself for the millionth time. Terrence Mann's one of the role players you need to win championships. And they a lot of people clearly don't feel like Harden's one of the stars that gets you to a championship at this point of his career. Whether you disagree or agree, that's on you. But that's obviously where they're coming from. Now, if it's a Zubats, 
great to see him finishing around the basket. Right place, right time. His little connection with Zoo. I'm sorry, with Westbrook. He had a couple of times where he bobbled the ball. Again, he doesn't have the best hands. We want to see him improve with that over the course of the season. Remember, he is only 26 years old still. So it's not like he's the finished article by any means. And feeding him in the post, feeding him down low against players that can't guard him, because he really does have a good right-handed jump hook. He really does have good touch around the basket. That will bring him some more confidence. And Russell Westbrook will give him confidence by just getting him easy buckets, keeping him more involved. And I thought Zoo defensively was really good as well. Obviously, we're not playing against the in-between game assassin and Jamal Murray, but he was protecting the rim really well. That's shown by the three blocks in one half. Robert Covington, more on the quiet side today, but liked what I saw. Finished a break in transition in the second half. Four points, two boards, and a steal on two for three shooting in 17 minutes for Rocco. I thought Kenyon Martin Jr. struggled a bit. He was two for three from the field, but had some rough moments defensively moving his feet. And he had an air ball, wide open three, and he didn't shoot another three after that, which I was fine with. But six points, five rebounds. At least he was rebounding and two assists. I think what KJ is, I don't really know what his game is offensively. Clearly a lob threat, a guy that hopefully can screen and roll and be in the dunker spot. But it's hard to have two guys in that dunker spot in today's NBA. So can he play alongside a Mason and a Zoo? Because he's got to be respected at least from not just maybe not the three, but at least the mid-range. I haven't seen anything that indicates that he could shoot even the mid-range. And Jackson Gatlin, the host of Locked On Rockets, he even said he hasn't shown much of a jumper. And he's not a guy that's going to create for himself. So where he fits offensively, he I mean, he's not a 3 and D guy. He's not a 4. He's only 6'6". Six, six, so it'll just be interesting to see how he's incorporated. I think in today's position, this NBA, though, he will have a role on this team and it'll be fine. And again, he's also getting situated. The stats look pretty good for him. Six points, five boards, two for three, plus seven. But it really felt like he was struggling in the moment. Anyway. Kobe Brown also got 19 minutes. I like how he didn't hesitate with his shot. Seven points, three boards, two assists, and three blocks to go along with a steal for Kobe Brown. Two for four from the field. One for three from deep. I like the guy. I don't think he's going to be part of our rotation. But I like his confidence. Clearly not just your normal college player or rookie. You know, he's been in college for four years. He's 23 years old, so he has that confidence. He's a grown man. Another Xavier Moon masterclass late in this game. He even got a dunk, and the bench was loving it. 12 points, two rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Xavier Moon can really play. and He plays without fear, shifty. Good elevation on his jump shot, a solid jump shot, good finisher, high basketball IQ, can pass here and there as well. Five for nine from the field and two for five from three. The Clippers as a team shot 10 for 28 from three, so 36%, not that bad, but not that great. And they got so many good looks. I hope that number is going to be better over the course of the season. And last season, it took a while for the Clippers three balls to start falling. I hope we can get off to a better start shooting the ball from deep. This season and Russell Westbrook generating even more open looks, hopefully, will be part of that. Amir Coffey had a donut. Coffey and donuts over four in 15 minutes. Jordan Miller had a really nice move on a bucket that he scored around the basket. Four points in six minutes on two for three shooting. But yeah, that was it. I'm going to rewatch the game, see if I can pick up anything else on the Thursday episode. But the Clippers... Overall, what do, you, what do we learn? That it's just preseason. <laughs> That's what we learned. That bone talent's really fast with the ball. KJ Martin, I'm not particularly sure what kind of offensive player he is. Really what kind of player he is yet besides a lobster and an athlete. Norman Powell has not been playing well, but that's okay. I think he will be fine. And Paul George looked great. Russell Westbrook looked great. And Ivica Zubats looked great. Look, Russell Westbrook is going to dominate on the offensive glass when teams leave him open. Watch. He had those big rebounds in game one of the playoffs against Phoenix. I think he'll have those this season as well. But you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper and LA Sports content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. 
so you know every single time we post a video. Let me know what your thoughts on the game were. Give me anything from the game. The age-old proverb continues, go Clippers.